Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I am the Bearded OG, and in this episode, uh, we are going to set up our permanent uh, steel beam and steel pipe factory. Um, so we have, when you know, we have this one going over here, but that's all temporary. We'll just let that continue running until we get the other one completely set up. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a look and see uh, where we are with the quantity. So we're uh, almost halfway full with pipes and. Yeah, the beams take quite a bit longer. So, yeah, let's uh, get started. So here's the thing. Um, I have uh, created in the Blueprint Designer uh, two pieces to this because it's too big to do all in one shot. So let's take a look at... Um, well, actually, no, let's not. Let's just actually spawn it in and we'll go from there. I was doing some testing earlier and I think it's all working. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. Uh, the first thing to know, however, is that for um, for this first part of our factory, the this is I, I'm in, in, intending for this to be the back wall. So, oh, let's get into zoopy de doop. Um, and I'm intending the western wall to be along this seam here. Okay, but actually, um, yeah, uh, yeah, right. But the way I design these particular templates, um, they're going to, uh, that actually includes this back wall just because of the way the conveyor uh, entries and all that came together. Now, um, for for now, we're gonna use um, the you know we're gonna place the the wall here, but I'm planning on doing something a little more interesting later on for for that. So, here's my general plan. I, I think this pad and everything all the way to the shore, maybe, will ultimately all become one building, and its focus will be all things steel production. Once I get that. All the factories set up uh, the production line set up and even maybe a little bit as we go along um, you know then we're gonna turn it into a really nice building um, so that's the tentative plan we'll, we'll just kind of see how all that goes okay so what we're gonna do is let's come over here and I'm going to I'm gonna set up a lookout tower so we have some height to work with here Let's just put that right there. Um, oh, you know what? Something just occurred to me. I'm going to need uh, some more frames to finish this out. Or to do this, rather. So let's go to modular frames and let's grab a stack of that. All right. And then after we, you know, after we get this set up, then we need to work on encased industrial beams. And after that, um, then I want to get started on two separate production lines to create our project parts for the space elevator, um, which we'll probably maybe end up doing over in that area, this pad here. Uh, the other thing I'm probably going to do over in that pad over there is set up um, uh, quartz and sulfur. Uh, production lines, you know, for, for the items we need for those things. Uh, we need quartz, for example, to make windows, you know, glass windows. We need the silica and all that. Anyway, let's uh, focus on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our blueprints and we're going to select this, uh, uh, no, steel ingots, three foundries. Now what this does, as you can see in the info there, is it uses that solid steel alternate recipe that we have um, and it produces 180 steel ingots per minute. Uh, this recipe uh, uses uh, two iron ingots and two coal to produce 60 per minute. So it's it's quite a bit nicer than this one, I think, um, because this one only does 45 per minute and uses an extra coal, um, but you know less a little bit less iron when it's all said and done, but still not a big deal. Uh, the one advantage that this one has over this one is you don't. You know, you don't need to a smelter in in between, but 
uh, and, you know, when, at the end of the day, that's not a big deal, and we just get more quantity. And the other nice thing about this recipe too, by the way, is, as as we will see, is that the steel beam recipe requires um, uh, 60, well, this is the output here, but it requires 60 per, per minute of these. So four, per, you know, four per cycle, but 60 per minute uh, on the input, right? It's not showing us the input, it's just showing us the output here. Uh, so that makes this recipe really nice because then it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up our steel foundries. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it this way, and we want it to be one tile over from the wall. Because remember, the what we're, what we're attempting to do here is we're attempting to make sure we always build uh, or always have that one tile boundary in between our machines. So I think that's where we want to go right there. All right, that looks like it's positioned correctly. Good. Um, now, let's, while we're still up here, first thing we're gonna do is grab some splitters and uh, turn them this way. And then we want to line them up with those conveyor holes there. Uh, remember this line coming in is 370, no, sorry, 270. Uh, product per minute and so the this these four splitters together are going to pull 120 product off um, the line and, and so we still you know we'll still have a lot more after that two four, yeah 270 that's what it is okay um, now uh, we just need mark one belts for this so we'll just hook up these belts here Took me a while to build this for a couple of reasons. You know, there was testing and having to do redo some things, but it's it was also very um, compact. Uh, things are very tight because of the boundaries of the, um, uh, you know, the blueprint designer. I wish they would have made it a little bit bigger than they did. I wonder if there's a mod that increases the size of that I should look at that because if there if there was, that's one. I mean, I'm not really planning on modding this series, but that would be one exception I would make. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So these are smelters. They're all, it's just a standard iron ingot recipe. They're taking in 30 ore per minute, outputting 30 iron ingots per minute. No overclocking. In fact, nothing in this whole setup is, is under or overclocked. It's all just uh, standard settings as far as that goes. But uh, what I did have to do is I had to make these lifts very, very tight in order to get everything to fit correctly within the uh, you know, the small boundary of the blueprint designer. It's worth it, though, to, to make this as a blueprint because then we all we have to do, you know, at least for the first part of anything requiring steel is just respawn this in and then adjust it from there. So it was definitely worth the hassle to go through this. Let's take a quick look at what's underneath here. I'm also using the, the metal grip uh, texture for the top of the machines themselves. Uh, so basically, this is your your standard manifold setup. Um, so everything comes in from each of the smelters along this belt. Uh, this belt needs to be marked too. Mathematically, this one does not. But in my testing, I found that if this is a mark one belt, it seems to kind of clog this guy up here. I, I mean, it'll eventually fill up and then start shutting down. I, I'm not really sure why, because that doesn't seem to work out mathematically, but it just has something to do with the overall flow of everything. Uh, so I, so if I change this to a Mark II, then that seemed to stop that problem and everything ran smoothly. Um, all right, so yeah, manifold design. If you're not familiar with what a manifold design is, there's really two types of inputs that I'm familiar with anyways in the game. There's manifold and there's load balanced. Uh, load balance conceptually is simple. It just simply means that you set it up so that the inputs are, uh, the outputs are matching the inputs of the next machine. Very simple in concept, very complicated potentially to actually do, especially when you have machines that are not, um, uh, you know, not even uh, an even ratio, uh, which is often the case. So the simpler way to handle all this is to set up a manifold design, which means everything is all combined together 
um, and then sent along, you know, from the outputs to the next input. Um, the manifold design is much easier to work with. The only downside to it, which is not really a downside in the long run, is it can take a little bit longer for your, um, you know, your whole production line to, to come fully online, but there's ways around that too. Uh, so yeah, so let's just look at the math here. This is uh, outputting 30 uh, ingots per minute. Uh, this is a 60 per minute belt, so that's not a problem. This is outputting another 30, which that now means this is carrying 60 per minute, which still should mathematically work with a tier, th uh, uh, with a this conveyor here, the tier one. Uh, but like I said, it didn't seem it, it seemed to clog up the machine. So f by making this a Mark II, it seemed to fix that issue. So even though mathematically this doesn't need to be a 120 belt, it is anyways. And then now we add another 30. Now we have 90 um, moving along this belt. And this most definitely needs to be a Mark II belt at that point. And then this adds another 30. So now we're up to 120. Uh, and this again is a Mark II belt. Also, just because of the, you know, the way these all aligned, um, I had I had a little curvature here. This thing was giving me fits, actually. And uh, uh, not, not just because of the curvature, but be when my first iteration of this everything was a little closer together and I was just having all kinds of hell trying to get that to, to fit um, so the way that I got it to fit is to just really scrunch up you know these lifts um, in order to have enough room to, to, to bring a belt over here okay so anyway uh, so now we have 120 product uh, of iron ingots flowing across the 120 belt into this splitter and now and and basically each one of these uh, steel foundries, um, they... How did that get in there? Oh, no. I must have, I must have included that in the, in the blueprint. Oh, that's hilarious. Here, let's fix that right now just so I don't forget. Um, I was looking at that and I'm going, what in the hell is that thing? Uh, no, we need to set down the designer. Did I already set it down? No, I guess I didn't. Let's put the thingy that way. Load steel. Oh, what am I missing? I need more frames. Let me go grab some more frames. Yeah, it's, it, it's just one of those things. If I don't fix it right now, I'll forget. And let's grab a couple of stacks of frames. And then every time I, you know, spawn it in, it'll be there. And so let's just take care of it right now. Load blueprint, steel foundries, ink. Yeah, I was looking at that. I'm going, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> All right, save the blueprint, overwrite. And now we're good. Let's just leave this here for now in case we need to reuse it again. Okay, so anyway, back to this. Um, these guys uh, take in 40 per minute. So four, 40 times 3, of course, is 120, so all of that uh, works out. Uh, what I'm going to do, at least temporarily, is I'm going to put some stairs uh, going up here. And in fact, I'm going to hold them back a little bit because of the... Uh, the other piece we're going to add here in a moment. This is not... Um, well, actually, what's most likely going to happen is from here, we're going to just have a, an open floor. You know what? If we're going to do that... Oh, wait a minute. Why isn't that... Is that matching up with this outside wall? Yeah, it is. Okay, never mind. Here, let's take these back down for a second. All right, and we'll uh, put our stairs back here. So yeah, this this will just be a you know permanent part of the factory floor. Uh, in the overall, you know, ultimately in the overall building. So lots of room. 
Okay, anyway, back to this. So each one of these takes in 40 um, ingots per minute. Those four together are sending 120. These three together are consuming 120. Very good. So that explains that. Coal is pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to pull that coal line off and, and run it through this port down here um, at 120 per minute. And each one of the uh, foundries takes in 40 per minute. 40 times 3 is 120. And uh, there you go. Pretty easy. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, let's go ahead and add the next piece to this. And that is the constructors. I, I wonder if I can... You know what? I'm not going to fight it. Let's get let's get up on a tower. Uh, it'll just be easier that way. I'm so looking forward to the time... That's not sticking out too far, is it? No. You know, when we can get the jetpack, because then we can essentially fly. And that's going to make everything easier. All right. Let's grab um, the uh, steel beams and pipes template and we want to turn it this way and then we just plug it it I'm kind of at a bad angle here we plug it in there I think oh uh, you know what I don't want to screw this up because then we have to take the whole fucking thing back down again let's get a little further back this way and also I'm gonna remove some of those for the moment so we have better visibility Oh, whoopsie. Steel beams and pipes. Okay. So we want, we basically just want to plug this in right there. And that looks correct. Yeah, that should be right. I hope it is, because if it isn't, we got to manually take it all back apart again. Not that that's that big of a deal, but... Uh, all right. Let's go back down here now. So this is the important part. We want to make sure that all of these are lined up, and it looks like they are. Beautiful. Okay, so... The hookup for this should be real super easy. Uh, oh, I guess we can't take that apart. Um, let's do it, uh, these two first. Okay, so everything's already connected down below. Um, so we're just going to take this and plug that into there. And it looks like it's the right, or no, sorry, we want to, we want to actually plug it into this lift. I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing over here. correct all right now um, down below here we have um, these two are easy this is outputting um, 40 no sorry outputting 60 steel ingots per minute it's going into these constructors here uh, they are both receiving 60 per minute to make 15 beams, right? So 60 steel per minute, outputting 15 beams. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. Very easy. Same thing here. 60 per minute, outputting 15 beams. One-to-one -one ratio, outputting 60. But over here, I have two constructors set up for steel pipe, which only take in 30 per minute each. So what we did down below here is we split, we're splitting off it and we're sending 30 to the first constructor. The other 30 come along this belt and go up into this second constructor. Okay. Pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy. Also, I am planning on, and I think I may have mentioned this to you guys, but if I didn't, I'm going to try for most of my builds, particularly the ones that are going to ultimately be inside of large buildings to use, um, logistics floors um, and try and put as much of the logistics as I can underneath the builds because then it makes the builds all nice, neat, and clean. 
see how nice and clean it is up here? We don't got a bunch of conveyor belts and shit all over the place. It's a beautiful thing. All right, now, um, the last step before we fire this thing up is that we need to uh, connect to our storage. And, of course, I didn't do that in the blueprint because you can't. Uh, you can't connect anything outside of the blueprint designer. It doesn't let you do it, which makes sense. So we just need to run all of these guys over to, to there. And I think the way that we'll do that is... So you have already got... Oh, and you know what? I think I actually set this up after I left you guys in the last episode. I had just put a couple of storage containers here, but then after you know after that that episode, I got to think, well, what the hell? Why don't I just run it into these two bins over here? Because that's where it needs to go, anyways. So I set up this configuration um, over here. Now remember, this is the one that's kind of weird because it's got a fourth, the copper sheetings coming off that belt. It's got four belts, so I had to kind of do the little wraparound thing. Well, what I did to add the next two items is I just put a merger up there. Um, and then, you know, to get them on that belt so those also wrap around and then go through our normal, you know, little setup here. So we should be able to continue utilizing this. We just need to cut into it uh, from over here. Um, yeah, so if I want to keep that exactly like it is, which I do, we're going to need to to bring these two products in right about here, I'm thinking. And we're going to need, you know, room to, uh, to put our 90 in. So I'm thinking we should probably try to come out there. That makes sense. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Oh, did I... Oh, I need to hook, hook my coal up. Yes, I do. Okay. So we, we can go ahead and stop all of this now. So I'll just pick all that up in a little bit. So let's grab this line here. This is actually a Mark III. It only really needs to be... Yeah, that only needs to be a Mark II. Because this has 270 product per minute coming down it. And, you know, we might... We probably at some point will tap off of that for something else, too. So, um... So this just needs to be a Mark II line. Now, the way we're going to do actually do this, though, um, let's actually put our factory wall, our, our main wall back in. Go that far with it. Uh, oh, these can just be the uh, these guys here. We need one more here. Okay. I might ultimately remove these inner walls, maybe. We'll see. I'm going to leave them for now. All right. So we need another one of you down here. Right. Okay, so I'm not going to actually be able to use the lift for this because that guy's going to be in the way. So we are going to have to bring this down to the ground, which is fine. I mean, sometimes you just got to do it that way. I like to keep things off the ground as much as possible, but sometimes you don't have much of a choice. All right, so that being the case, uh, let's go ahead and connect a Mark II to this. We'll bring it back to uh, here. Go back to... What we could do, though, actually, is we could at least lift this. Well, no, we really 
We can if we hold it back a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so... What I'm thinking is... Maybe there. That's... Yeah, actually, go up there. Okay. Now, let's do a mark two to here. Then we do a mark two coming off of here. We might not even need this, actually, now that I think about it. Haha, <clears throat> <laughs> beautiful. I, I think. Is that straight? Yeah, I think it's straight. Alright, let's um put a door here. Yeah, I think that's straight. Okay. I had to do a little curve here also to get that to line up. But see, that's the beauty of logistics floors is you hide all of that jank stuff. I mean, you still, or I still want to set it up nice and neat down here too as much as I can, but at least when you're doing kind of weird stuff like this, it hides it. Good. Okay, so that's bringing the coal into the foundries. So we got all our inputs taken care of. Now what we're going to do is we got to figure out uh, getting out of here and down to uh, our storage. So we're going to start that process by putting in our, uh, whoops, our, our grommets or our floor holes. Uh, oh, hmm. I guess we're just going to have to extend this floor out one more tile, which we can do. That's actually not a problem. Those are right up against there. Let's do this one like that, too. It's a little tight, but it just makes things more compact. Game, uh, whoops, uh, the game does let us do it, and it doesn't look bad. Okay, good. Now, um, <clears throat> I want to keep this up. Uh, high, except for this is going to be a thing. So for this guy, we're going to have to come down. I think we want to reverse that. Yeah. Okay. So this guy's going to have to come down lower to get underneath that belt. Okay, here, let's uh, remove those as well. We'll get these parts in first, and then these will come down. Yeah, I need to actually turn that belt the other direction. These are down to low. I like this one because I can still walk underneath it. Okay, good. Uh, now what we're going to do is put a merger here uh, with the output going that direction. Let's lock that in place. And we know it's lined up on that side, and uh, it's going to be going right straight out that way. Uh, 
I think that's good. Do the same thing over here. Make sure it's lined up there. The green line shows us that it's lined up there. So we're good to go. All right, let's reattach these. You're always listening for that little beep there that tells you that it's going to connect. So that beep there. And then we should be able to just run a line out of here at a nice 90. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So that's outputting... Oh, wait a second. I, you know what? I just remembered something. This is, this is a pipe machine. Right. Okay. No, no. We don't want to connect this to there at all. Let's just leave that there. Uh, and that means we don't need this either. That still should be a nice little 90. It is a little jankified right there, though. Uh, you know what? No, actually, I think we can fix that by just resetting this. Yeah, it, I mean, the accordion's not out quite as far as it was before, so it, it works. Right, so these are the beams, and so we're going to be sending a total of 30, so we, we don't need anything more than a Mark 1 for any of this. Now, if we... Just trying to decide how it, uh, hmm. you know what? We don't need these to be down so low. Uh, the only reason I did that is to match with this one, but that's the pipes. So what we're going to do before we take that splitter down is we're going to stack another one on top of there. So we don't have to reset it. And then we're just going to keep these up high. There. That's better. Now, um, I think... Well, I don't know. Let's, let's see if this will work. I don't know if that's going to line up or not. It looks like it, it is. Uh, is it? I think so. Yeah, I think that does line up. Looks pretty damn straight to me. Nice. Okay. Now, there's another thing we could maybe do here. What if we... Uh, no, you know what? Let's just leave that there. I want to try and utilize this hole, though, too. So we're going to have to do a little bit of fancy schmancy stuff down here to get that to work. I think... I'm going to want that to turn back the other way. Let's put this one in first. Uh, we need to reverse that. And we need to bring it down to here. Actually, I've got a different idea. If we put a lift there and turn it this way. And reverse it. That means we want to bring this down further. To here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's redo this one as well. And we want it to go down there. I think what I'm going to do here is let's run that line first. And then we're just going to put, whoops. Okay, so that's the line we want to be on right here. We're just going to put a merger here. Yeah, okay. Um, when, you, when you pop a merger or a splitter on an existing belt, 
most of the time um, it'll it'll make the connection and the way you can confirm that is if you if you look if you just point your dismantling tool at the belt and you see that it breaks you see the little ghost outline where it breaks that means it's properly connected if the belt's going all the way through then it didn't connect properly and I I can't I, I think I've been in that situation before I guess I'm not 100% sure but anyway Okay, good. So, so that gives us a nice straight 90. Oh, actually, it's not perfectly straight. It is off just a little bit. Uh, okay, that means we just need to s nudge this over a, a little more. Okay, I'm just kind of visualizing where it's at. Turn it this way. Oh, it's not going to let us do that because of the way it's going to want to snap. Okay, let's do this. Let's lock that in place. Um, all right, hold on. I think there's a way we can make this work. I'm just going to temporarily put this here because it's our guide. Let's get rid of this. And maybe even do it from this side. Okay, we'll get ourselves a splitter or a merger. And see, now it's lined up on that, um, on this belt here. So it'll be perfect. Now it's perfectly straight. Nice. I love it. Okay. Now we'll just reset this. Very good. And then we'll hook this one back up. And I think we're in business. All right. So that takes care of everything over here. Um, so now we just have to finish this part. Neither one of these, um, one line's going to have 40 pipes, one's going to have 30 beams. So this can all stay mark one lines. Uh, that's the straight part there. And we'll go to here. Okay, I don't, how many, of, how high are these guys? We're one... Two, three, four, five, six up. Okay, make sure that's on zoop. One, or, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's actually seven high, if you count the bottom one. Uh, I think that's where we want to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay. Just thinking here. Um, I think I want to actually move these back. Let's go back to... We might be able to get away with three. Let's try three. Just because I want to keep this first tile as clear as possible. That's why there's a there's a reason for it. Okay. Let's grab all of these. Okay. Now, if we take and put a lift up here. With the input there and let's see. I think it's going to probably Go there. Let's see if that's correct. Oh, did I put that backwards? I'll bet you I did. Try that again. 
Yeah, we need to reverse that. There we go. Okay. That's where I think it's supposed to go. Oh, it's, it's too damn long. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the right height, I think. So let's bring this forward one. And let's see if this one lines up with it. Okay. Is that level? I believe it is. Looks good. If we face directly south and just kind of line it up with the top of our screen, it's... Hmm. It does seem to be off, but just like imperceptibly so. Why would that be, though? All right, if we face directly south, uh, you know, with our compass, and we line this up at the top of our screen, it's not... What? What the hell, man? That should be, like, perfectly level. I don't get it. I mean, I'm not going to change it. You guys would never have even known that if I hadn't pointed it out, because it's so imperceptible. I just don't understand why. Uh, why? Because everything is... Coming off the same foundations and everything. That's baffling. I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't know what it is. If you guys know why that's happening, let me know. I'd just be curious. But I'm not going to worry about it because it's not... It, again, it's pretty much imperceptible. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it at night. And neither should you. Oh. is You know what? Is it because I'm not... Okay, here, let's point directly to the east, get right in the center. That's the problem. This belt isn't perfectly straight. That is what it is. Okay, so I think we just need to move this whole thingy over one click. See, I told you there was a reason. I'm glad I'm glad I discovered that though because this is this shit's got to be right man this is satisfactory you got to do this stuff right all right I think that's oh is that where we were yeah I think that's where we were all right now let's do our little trick again here we're facing directly south and look at that oh Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Now, um, let me actually confirm that I do have Is that gonna right angle? Well, we'll make sure that it does. Yeah, that, that's correct up there. That's got to be correct. Okay, make sure we're facing directly east. Um, And I think that's where we want to go. Let's just walk it down to make sure. Yeah, I think that's correct. What the hell? It's because this is a lift. All right, I think we can fix that by attaching directly to here. I mean, we are at the absolute limit of the length of that conveyor line. Okay, that looks good. And then we just reattach the lift in here. Okay. 
Problem solved. And I just broke my teeth. Okay. And now the final thing that remains here is to just get these guys tapped into this line. Um, so if we just go here and then back two and up seven and here back two up seven Maybe I went up eight. Let's break these lines. Oh wow, look at that planet up there. That's awesome. Okay, that looks good to me from down here. I think we've accomplished our connections. Don't see anything that looks off. Everything's nice and level. I think we're good to go. All right, guys, it's time for us to fire this sucker up. Uh, we still have plenty of clearance, you know, uh, on the road here, too, for driving through there with tractors if, uh, or explorers or whatever. Our power connections, uh, our main power connection is here. Well, it doesn't really matter which one we use. Um, let's also actually hurl. I'm, I'm going to hold off on that for a moment. just want to watch everything and make sure it's going to be good. Uh, I don't think we need this. Still exposed, though. Let's um, actually no. Let's get the power going first because I want it, I want it to get it started up because it's going to take a while for it to ramp up to where it needs to be. Um, let's put this wall in here. And I think what we'll do is this is ultimately going to be another wall, almost certainly. So let's put that wall in place and this wall in place. And we're going to grab a, a double wall outlet. where I want that to go. And now that I think about it, I think I also want to... Whoops. Oh, we're out of plates. Running out of stuff left and right. That's okay, though, because uh, there goes my teeth again. Uh, we have our, our storage here with all kinds of stuff in it. Let's actually take three stacks of those. We used a bunch of them for the tier one um, belts. Again, I'm planning on doing something a little more fancy with this wall ultimately. But for now, we're just making it functional. Okay, let's put that there. And then we will run a power line. What is that line doing? Oh yeah, that one's going to there. Okay, let's run a power line down to here. Can we get, oh man, not quite. All right, so if that's the case, what I'm gonna actually do is span that distance about halfway-ish. Maybe right about here on this scene.
Let's grab a... Is there any reason why we would want a double outlet down here? Probably not. And if we do need one in the future, we can just change it out. So let's bring this down to uh, probably there. Is that clipping? Oh, shit. Uh, that's not good. All right, you know what? Then forget about this. I'm just going to connect it here. All right, here we go, guys. Boom. Let's see if this sucker starts up and does what we're expecting it to do. Why are those lines not moving there? Already we have an issue. Okay, something is messed up. I could have sworn I tested all this. Nope, let's not get in the Orion. Um, so that means there's something screwy with these connections. needs to go like that. Uh, we're going to have to actually do these from up above. I swear I tested this. It, I'm baffled as to why that's not working. There it goes. Okay, note to self. Fix that in the blueprint design. So I, I mentioned this to you guys before. I don't know if you remember me saying it, but um, it is my plan to use the, the steel tread pattern for all of the machines, and then the normal floor will just be concrete, at least you know for this for this building okay so that's all flowing the spice is flowing we're happy we can cover that now the iron spice is flowing okay let's take a look and see what's going on here so we got the ore coming in and it's uh all right you are yeah, you're outputting your ingots. Why? Why did I not see that when I looked at this? It's just, I guess it's just holding steady at one iron ingot. Yeah, because it's operating at 100%. Okay. There's no actual buildup. It's just perfectly 100%. Um... Put this back in place. You're operating at 100% with no buildup. You're operating at 100%. And you're at 100%. Okay, so that our smelters are good. Uh, let's take a look at you. You are not moving steel through. Why not? Now what's the matter? Okay, we got something going on over on this side now. What are, are all of you jammed up? Yeah, you're all full of steel ingots and you're not pushing them through. I don't I don't know what to tell you guys. I I literally spent hours testing this and it worked. I, I don't know what changed.
I really don't. Um, that is so weird. Okay, well, let's deal with the problem. It's probably a fairly simple issue. Oh! It isn't these guys. These guys are fine. Okay, the problem is over on the other side then. All right. The problem is with these dudes. You're not receiving your steel. So that means that there's something screwy with these these guys on this side. Let's see if we can troubleshoot this one first. I probably have these bass backwards. Uh, it's really easy to do that when you're trying to connect, when you connect to the grommet instead of the machine. Okay, connect to the grommet and reverse that. Connect to the grommet and that's the right, there we go. Okay, is that guy going to start up? It still didn't start. Okay, now what's the matter? Let's do a door right here. Oh, no power. What? Oh, <laughs> I forgot the power on this side. I am such a noob. All right. That's an easy thing to fix. What we'll do is we'll grab uh, the, that was a double, right? I think so. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just keep it a double. I think right there's where we want to be. Uh, -uh one over. There we go. Okay. So, so that's why it actually worked when I was testing it. Because <laughs> I had power on everything. Okay. That solves that mystery. I was like totally baffled. I'm going, what the hell's going on here, man? It looks like we're up and running, ladies and gentlemen. All the constructors are moving. All right. Fantastic. See now we can now we can see the ingots here. So if this Yeah, it's probably just gonna take a little bit of time for everything to to you know come to full efficiency. Because that's usually what happens on a manifold system. Um and until that Oh, shit. Uh, until that does happen, um, this this may get um, jammed up a little bit because it's slowly accumulating more ingots. It's, in other words, it's making them faster than it, uh, you know, than they're going out. But that should... Theoretically, anyways, correct itself uh, once this is fully up and running. One thing you can do if you want to help it along, well, there's a couple things you can do. You can preload these guys with steel and coal if you have it, uh, which I don't. I don't have enough to do that. Or, I'm sorry, with iron and coal in this case. But actually, no, that one's already preloaded. Because of our, our shutdown, it gave it a chance. Yeah, it gave them all a chance to load. All right. 
We have completed our very first in the new factory permanent steel production line. And we are now adding permanently adding steel beams and pipes to our storage. Everything's coming in there. And of course, because this is on our smart um, storage setup, once those do eventually fill up, then the overflow will go over here into the sink. Uh, how many coupons do we have, by the way? We have 12 coupons. Okay, cool. All of this over here can now be taken down. It is no longer needed. Um, so let's do that next. Try and get at an angle so we're not breaking other things. Of course, there's not really anything over here that's being used by anything else. I think I'll just leave those power lines there for the moment. Okay, um, let's just stop those there for now to keep things nice and neat. I need to put my stripes down on my road. I'm also going to buy some more of the decals, too, from the store eventually. I think we're in good shape, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so the next production line we need to build are encased industrial beams. Um, and those will be... Let's take a look at those real quick. Here we go. Oh, it's E encased, not I encased. Uh, so we'll need an assembler for this. They're going to take in steel beams and concrete. Uh, for the steel beams, uh, we'll just once again, using the blueprint designer, um, set down our steel foundries to start that process and then modify the whole thing to work. Uh, with a encased industrial beams production line and I haven't I haven't worked through that yet So I don't know how the numbers will work out But the plan will be to use you know that the the same steel blueprint template to start that and then I'll build a an encased industrial beams uh, Section that works based off of that and then you know adjust accordingly What I'm gonna do right now before I forget is I'm gonna reload um, this, no, actually, yeah, we do need to reload this because I did have to fix those lifts in the very back, uh, oh, in the very back here that I, that weren't correct. So I'm going to take care of that and let you guys go here and in the next episode, uh, I'm not exactly sure what we'll do in the next episode. Uh, there's several things we need to do. We need to get quartz going. So we can make silica, so we can make windows for our build. We need to get sulfur going so we can manufacture gunpowder and all that stuff. That That's a little less important at this point. Uh, we need to get cotarium going because we need cotarium ingots and or quick wire for a couple of our alternate recipes. We need to get copper going. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do copper completely off camera because it's just going to be the same thing, but I'll show you where it is. It's just right over there. And we have a pure node, and I'm just going to tie that node in with, um, you know, with this line that we already have. Okay, uh, and get copper running here because we are going to need it. So I'll do that part off camera. Um, right over on that cliff over there where my cursor's pointing there is a pure Caterium node. So I, we have a couple options with that. We could either just leave the quick wire set up at our original, oh, I guess it's, I guess it's on that cliff right over there. Um, yeah, just right there. And it's pure too. Um, we, we could either tap into the, the Caterium we already got running up here, or we could just leave that alone and let it just keep feeding the sink for us for coupons and do all of our stuff off of this node. 
uh, because this node is so close to our new factory, I think that's what we'll we'll do, and we'll just leave this one alone unless we, you know, need to tap into it for some some reason. So I'll probably get that set up off camera too, just because it's simply going to be me plopping a miner down there, building a conveyor line to the factory. So copper, caterium, I'll do off camera. Next episode, then we will probably either get going on the encased industrial beams or we will get some quartz set up, which is going to be a fairly big project only because it's so far away from here. After that, then the plan is going to be to get started on the two project items for the space elevator. And those are versatile frameworks, which need an assembler, we'll have to set up a modular frame line and more beams. And we also need um, automated wiring. And that's what we need the copper for because we need copper to make the stators. All right, so that's what's coming up. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video. And I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye-bye.